acid base balance. The blood's pH is normally, can you fill that in? Hopefully at this point you would know that the blood's pH is normally 7.4, that's its regular pH, and it is very tightly controlled. So if it is less than 7.35, then the patient has a condition known as acidosis. If the blood becomes too acidic, proteins begin to stop functioning, and that can result in death. If it gets above 7.45, we call that alkalosis, and the blood is too alkaline. So I'm going to start by talking about acidosis and its causes. Let's use a pink pen for this. Okay, so I'm actually going to put the cause over here. Um, one of the most common causes of acidosis is something like COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and you also know by now that that would include bronchitis, and can you think of the other one? Emphysema. along the same lines of inhibiting gas exchange, pneumonia, or other lung problems. Could even be trauma to the lungs or collapsed lungs. So disease or trauma. All of these though have in common that there's impaired gas exchange. And when gas exchange is impaired, then carbon dioxide increases in the blood. And that's our we measure that is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And these are both examples of respiratory acidosis. So all of these can result in respiratory. Carbon dioxide makes the blood acidic because it usually combines with water to form a little bit of what's called carbonic acid. So let's use a different color to remind ourselves of that, depending on whether you've read that in the notes or studied that yet. Now carbonic acid is a weak acid, which means it kind of go, it combines with carbon dioxide and then it breaks apart from carbon dioxide. But really, if you understand the idea that carbon dioxide in the blood increases the acidity of the blood, you kind of get the problem. So anything that is going to cause someone to retain carbon dioxide, such as all of these do, then you're going to end up with respiratory acidosis. So respiratory acidosis is always caused by a problem with the lungs. Now we're going to look at a variety of other causes of acidosis. So uh, maybe you've wondered at times, why is it that something like cholera or other really bad diarrheal diseases can cause death within a short amount of time? Well, diarrhea causes
bicarbonate. It's bicarbonate. Really very much like baking soda. And then the question I want to ask you is where did that bicarbonate come from? You might remember all the way back to the beginning of the quarter that bicarbonate is an important secretion in digestive processes. And do you remember where that bicarbonate comes from? It comes from the pancreas. So the pancreas produces bicarbonate to neutralize the acidic chyme. So if someone has very bad diarrhea, they're losing that bicarbonate in their feces. Normally it's reabsorbed, so they're losing too much bicarbonate. So you could put a line over here and say that they have don't have enough bicarbonate in the blood anymore. And then that, by losing um, bicarbonate, the blood becomes more acidic. Okay, we'll put a line right here to separate respiratory acidosis from metabolic acidosis, which is what we're going to be listing a few of. Okay, so diarrhea is one obvious one that can cause um, acidity of the blood, acidosis. And then another one that you'll probably see in a healthcare setting is diabetic ketoacidosis. diabetic ketoacidosis, the patient has a couple of problems. One of the problems is their blood glucose is um, very, very high and unable to enter the cells. So they're not able to use the glucose in their diet. Uh, and that's because they don't have enough insulin to allow the glucose in. But at the same time, their ketones go up very high. And why is that? So let's write, they have an increase in ketones, and then we'll use our black pen. These are acidic in the blood. So having too many ketones in the blood makes the blood too acidic. But this is an unusual situation caused by a lack of insulin. So the cause of um, this is that, so ketones can be this is review right ketones can be substituted for glucose and who is making the ketones do you remember where they're made Okay, so it's a little bit of a long story, but I think it's a story that at this point in the class you should be able to understand. First of all, you know that the liver makes ketones in the absence of carbohydrates. And if there isn't um, enough effective insulin, either because the patient doesn't make enough insulin, or they're extremely insulin resistant, or they can't make any insulin at all, but if they don't have enough effective insulin, then there's no insulin to tell the liver, stop making ketones, which it normally would do. So the liver just makes ketones and ketones and ketones and ketones and ketones without being told to stop, and you get very acidic blood from the high ketones. So if the patient is administered insulin, not only does their blood glucose go down, but their ketones will go down too, because their liver will stop making ketones. Okay, now let's look at another um, cause of acidosis, and this would be at the kidney level. So 
So the kidney's not working properly. Either they are diseased or um, they've been affected by toxins, um, like in septic shock, for example, or uh, the patient is in shock for another reason and the kidneys aren't working properly. And the reason is, oh, so let's actually put our arrow over here. So if the kidneys aren't working properly, then there is too much hydrogen in the blood. So you might be able to then say, oh, right, because the kidneys excrete hydrogen ions as needed. So we make acid all the time due to metab metabolic byproducts. And we should also put, so this is, hydrogen is a measure of acidity in the blood. And bicarbonate neutralizes acid. So if you don't have enough bicarbonate, you can become acidotic. If you have too many ketones, you can become acidotic. Too much hydrogen ion, you can become um, acidotic. And then a less common but still notable cause of acidosis could be, let's say the kidneys are working and the lungs are working, everything is working, the patient or the person, maybe this is like a marathon or ultra marathon runner, is just um, experiencing excessive metabolism from extreme sports, or maybe they're not an extreme athlete, but they've just overexertion. It seems less likely if their lungs and their kidneys are healthy, but um, it is notable that it could happen. Um, and in this case, the excessive metabolism, they're making too much lactic acid. You can see right in the name, right? That's going to make the blood acidic. Carbon dioxide, too much carbon dioxide, which means that their partial pressure of carbon dioxide in their blood is going to be going up. Okay, so all of these... I know you can't see it exactly on your paper, but from diarrhea all the way down to excessive metabolism, you can make a big bracket. I'll show you what mine looks like. So I started it there, and then it goes to there. And all of these are causes of metabolic acidosis. So metabolic acidosis. Uh, we looked at one, two, three, four causes. I just put an arrow to all of them. And then respiratory acidosis, we just looked at the one cause, which is uh, the lungs not working right. So a patient can suffer from acidosis if their lungs aren't working right. They can also suffer from acidosis if their kidneys aren't working right and they can suffer from acidosis if they are losing too much bicarbonate from diarrhea or if their metabolism is making too many acidic byproducts such as ketones. Okay, um, kind of ran out of room on this page, so I'll, on the next one I'll look at respiratory and metabolic alkalosis.